Hello guys, so we're live and I have to check if all the sound works so if you guys can hear me let me know. Okay that's good. So let's see if you guys can hear the co-founders or Jeroen and Erik on Discord. Can you say something Jeroen? Hello. Good day guys. Right? Did you guys just hear you? And that was Eric. Um, let's see. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. So, welcome to the stream. So today we have some we have some really exciting things to show. Um, what you can expect is that. We're going to go through the latest changes of the keyboard. It's a quiet, I call it. I'm a bit quiet. So it's almost says. Okay, yep. let me see if I can do something about that. Okay, now I just boosted myself a bit. Is that better? Uh, don't <laughs> don't look at the curtains behind me. It's just <laughs> there's just improv, uh, <laughs> improv improv green screen. <laughs> how's the how's the sound right now, guys? Am I am I louder now? Yeah, better? Okay, good, good. Um, if there's another problem, just let me know. Oh, wait, I might know. No. Okay, and uh, how about Eric and Yoon that spoke earlier? How is their voice? For you, it's a bit too loud. Okay, so probably it's because... And probably for Thomas, it is a problem on his side. So I'm just going to lower it down a little bit. There we go. No, don't lower us. No, not you guys, me. So how, uh -oh. how, let's do another check again. So this is my voice, and Jeroen will go next, and then Eric, and just let us know which voice is too soft or too loud. Okay, so this is my voice. Eric? Oh, and this is my beautiful voice. <laughs> certainly is. Right. So if there's any problem with that, just let me know. <coughs> so let's get back on the stream. Um, okay, so today uh, we're going to show you some progress we've made, and this is—I don't—if you've been following us for some while, some of the things are going to be very familiar for you, uh, but some of the things are entirely new, as in you've never—you've never. You've never seen it before because it was never there but the functions might be similar if you're new to to us or this is the first time you see anything of us um, you're gonna see entirely new stuff so I'm gonna go through that the, the new things and then I have a couple of games ready um, and we're gonna see if we can use the keyboard in these games I don't have a really big library of games but I have uh, GTA ready I have Star Citizen and I have Overwatch, and let's see, I also have an example of when the keyboard does not work, which is Metal Gear Solid. Um, so depending on what you guys want to see, uh, the game you want to see being used, um, I'll start it up. But let's start first with the new things. The new things. And let's see gonna do this a little bit slow because I can see there's just four people watching now so let's see if there's gonna be more um, so I'm gonna go through some basics first uh, of the keyboard hey Calder how much did you pledge for Star Citizen? sorry? how much did you pledge for Star Citizen? Oh, how much I pledged? well honestly yeah. where do you think the uh, Kickstarter money went to? Uh... yeah <laughs> we had to buy all the spaceships so you know <laughs> We're in the end, we're only able to make one keyboard and just for us to play Star Citizen with. So the rest of the money went to Starships. 
but honestly, honestly, with um, with Star Citizen, uh, we just bought the the beta package, and we contacted uh, what what's the name, Cl Cloud Cloud something Cloud Imperium. I forgot the name of the company, and uh, they uh, gave us a couple of ships, unlocked a couple of ships for us uh, to try out. I have to be very honest. I've only played it once uh, together with uh, Trent the Wander. He uh, he was very nice to uh, guide me through it. Um, so if I start that one up again, I'm not sure if I'll do the right things, but I'm sure you guys can help me out with that. So let's see. Yeah. Okay. So we're at six now. That's already better. It's so let's get to some. Let's show the keyboard here for a second, and I'll just go for some basics before. I'll go for the new things until we have a bit more views. Okay. So here I have the keyboard. I don't know if this is a good angle. The I uh, this time if you've seen the previous stream I had other keycaps installed. Now I have another set of keycap other keycaps installed. Uh, it's not the keycaps the keyboard comes with, but this is just uh for fun. So um if you know the basics of the keyboard yeah exactly last <laughs> different keycaps yep so if you know the basics of the keyboard then you know that let's see if I can focus this a bit more from the distance okay then you know that you can obviously you can take off the keycap here which exposes the switch let's see if I get the camera to focus I'm not able to control it so we're very dependent on autofocus here Oh, almost. Come on, you can do it. Yep. Here, here, here. Okay, well, doesn't seem to do what I really want it to do. Um, so let's just keep going. So I just took off the keycap. And here I can take off the switch as well. And as you can see, so this the keyboard is still on and here you can see what's underneath the keycap so this is um, this is the whole thing about our keyboard our keyboard works on infrared light and with the infrared light we're able to read analog values so what you see basically down here are two boxes one box sends a light and the other box receives the light and the more light the other box receives the stronger the signal and the different analog value you send so here we have the switch. It's a very, I'm sorry for the focus, but I'm not able to control it, so we'll just have to do it with this. Um, so you can see from the switch, uh, there's no soldering, there's no pins or anything like that. And it's all optical. So you can see there's two boxes here in the top. This is where the light goes through. And this bigger circle underneath is where the LED light goes through. So I can, swap the switch with any other s switch well I can swap with any other flare tech switch this is the red switch so there's no click there's also a blue switch which does which does have a click okay let me just put it back on okay so that's the that's the like, putting our keyboard the our keyboard really really basic um, it works on infrared it's an optical switch and we can read analog Okay, let's see if. So, usually what I do is, um, after explaining like a, s a small part, I would ask you guys if you have any questions about this particular part, because maybe there's something you've always wondered or had questions about. So, if there's any question about keycap or the switch itself, or about what I just showed with the IR, uh, you're welcome to ask right now. And meanwhile. See if I can change the view from top down. Let's see. Question is so. Oh, I have Eric. Eric here. Eric. Eric. He's muted. He's muted. No, no, no. Okay, there no, we go. So Eric is going <laughs> to help me with the questions here and keep the chat uh, in sight. Um, so. I can already see there's the first question is is switches clean oh if you have to clean the switches regularly um, no you don't you don't have to you don't have to clean the switch itself uh, honestly 
we haven't come to a point we have not come to a point where by uh, this anything got dirty enough that would interfere with the optical um, and you don't have to clean the switch in matter of fact I can even on these two sensors here I can put my finger on it and I can smudge it with my fatty fingers and it will just still work so there's not a concern for that okay let's see oh about oh so uh, when you talk about lubing by the way um, I'll get another switch out I'm not allowed to show the inside the exact inside of the switch but what I can show you is you see here it's just it's just like a cherry mix sw switch you can unclick it here and here you can take off the top and then it will expose the internals of which there's also a spring uh, so just like cherry mix switches you can just modify the spring with the same type of uh, cherry mix springs um, and you can lube it if you want to um, we haven't tried lubing it so I'm not sure if it will interfere at all uh, there might be a chance but I'm not sure about that not tested yet okay that's the next question can we set the point where the input is recognized for not analog inputs so can we have custom activation points uh, yes we can have a custom activation point so we're gonna get in that uh, to that in a second because we have a demo for that um, so before I'm going to show that I'll just continue to the next thing is I'm going to show you the basic well I don't know if this is smart with the camera let's see if I can make a top-down view from here let me set this up in a smart way Okay, this is not working out. One sec. Okay, there we go. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, I have to tell Yerun. Try losing switches for the next Yerun, stream. Guess Can one do guess one one time what I have still connected. Give me one sec guys. Oh what's up? What are okay. you what is still connected? Debugger. It's gonna disconnect it here. Give me one minute, guys. Huh. Doesn't matter. Uh, I have to turn around the keyboard and <laughs> don't want this one in the open. All right, there we go. There we go. La la la. Okay. Oh, regarding looping of the switch, by the way, uh -huh. the only thing I'm worried about is that the switch stem, well, the lens, the optical lens is part of the switch stem itself, So, and uh, the spring goes around the switch stem, so I can imagine that if you start looping the, uh, um, the spring, then it may influence the reflection of the light, but we haven't tested it yet, so we'll probably get back to that someday. Yeah, we will. Um, and we have uh, some awesome beta testers that are very um, avid with uh, mechanical keyboards in, in itself. Um, I bet they're able to help us also with testing more of these uh, type of changes and uh, lubing the switches for one of them, being one of them. Okay, so um, here you can see the entire keyboard. I don't know if it's very clear and it might change color, but just ignore that. Uh, what I want you to pay attention to, and it's not very sharp. It's a, uh, but I, like I said, I'm not able to do a lot about the focus right now. But here's a mode key. It's like the loading screen still in front of your finger. Okay, wait, let's see if I can... There we go. Okay, so here we have... The, oh, first I have to tell you, you can see it has the RGB lights on. But as you might notice, the caps lock WASD are more bright than the other keys. So here I want to mention that this prototype version is the old prototype version, which is the one without individual RGB. So there's not no individual RGB on this prototype. Uh, we will show a little bit of individual RGB if we get the chance today uh, through, through Jeroen, because he does have one. Uh, but that will, we'll get back to that later. So I want to explain some basics about the keyboard, how it's set up right now. So here you have what's called a mode key, and that's our uh, what we we made it ourselves. 
Um, with this mode key, you can switch between digital mode and analog mode. So if I press it now, it just switched to analog mode. Um, in this case, we just want to uh, sh very clearly show you it's an analog mode by highlighting WASD here. So by no means this is uh, you know uh, something you have to stick with. Um, it's just to make it very clear that this is analog mode. Okay, so when I press it again, it goes back to digital mode. So uh, when a question comes, what is analog mode? What is digital mode? Digital mode is it functions like a keyboard and it can just do on-off signals basically. When we go to analog mode, it functions as if you've read a bit about our blog, it functions as an Xbox controller or a gamepad. In this case, we're just going to do Xbox controller. But at the same time, it can still function as a keyboard, which I'll show you later. Um, but the biggest point is it's going to read the analog value. So it does it. So ha pressing the key down has effect in a gr in a granular way. Okay. So in between these, there's there there are free analog modes. There are free analog profiles I'd say they're free analog profiles right now and this is not for final I can switch between them with this with the pause key right, yeah so here you can see that WASD changes from color from to from red to green and to um, blue but let's see blue. yeah okay so we have red green and this is actually kind of an ice blue but it's very hard to see here um, so we'd, let's just call this white, okay? So this is what we call white. Then here we have red, here we have green. So this is just for you to know what I'm doing when I'm showing things, okay? So now you know the basics of the keyboard settings. Let me put the camera back here. Is there any questions? Oh, oh we got a question from... Uh, yeah. Let me keep this Hello. Uh, how wide is support for analog mode? How wide is the support for analog mode? How wide is the support for analog mode? Yeah, um, with can. wide, wh can you specify what you mean with wide? You mean the range of the analog or? Um, yeah, depends if it's about the product. Like how many games will be supported? Oh, okay. So, um, we can go through this. Um, right now, you should already assume that. Change this here. Any game, any game that supports Xbox controller, also supports analog. That's how you can basically see it. There's just that some games they support a Xbox controller, but they block the Xbox controller when you use your mouse. Um, or they block the mouse when you use the Xbox controller. And I'm going to show you an example of that. Oh, um, are my free? That's a really good point. Uh, it should work. I haven't tried it yet, though. I think I have armor free on my. Uh, I think I have armor free on my uh, computer. I just don't have it installed. Let me take a look here. Let's see. Let's see. And otherwise, I'll not be able to get through it probably. So, I'll remember this one for the next stream to see if we can uh, have a demo in uh, Arma Free. Um, what I can do right now, since we were since we were talking about when does the keyword work analog, when does it not work analog, maybe before I go into the new futures here. Uh, no, it's better to go to do the it's better to do the UI first, and then we'll go to the game. Okay. Wait, let's first do another question. So, okay. Uh, is there anything you guys need to do for each game to support them? Or will support in these games will come out of the box? It will support these games out of the box. So we don't have to do any modifications, any weird stuff to make it work for particular games. And even better so, um, and this is what I'm going to show you right now, is that for every game, you want to have different, probably for most games you want to have different settings on your keyboard different different analog settings because it works better for that game um, but this is things like um, where do you want the Xbox controls to be mapped uh, because f when you're a game that supports Xbox controller and you want to walk okay you want to walk analog in a game naturally you would just say okay I just use WASD right 
uh, on my keyboard and I would just do my walking animations blah 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 when you change to analog mode you expect WSD to also just walk in a game but the fact is you need to map the left analog stick on WSD if the game says if the game if you want to walk analog because in the game it thinks you're using a left analog stick not WSD so um, we'll be showing that in a minute is there yeah and then uh, mm -hmm. I, I think one more question before you can show it to us mm -hmm. uh, we'll be able to write some software directly on the keyboard processor um, yes so actually how it works right now this is what I'm going to tell you right now I'm going to show you a our alpha version of the UI uh, or the GUI the alpha version of the GUI this is like literally the first version of the GUI and this what this GUI does is change settings on the keyboard so there's actually no driver no software on the PC that you need to install to make it work uh, nor if you change something in that GUI analog profiles keys whatever it is it saves it on the keyboard itself so not on the software I have to say uh, that this is how we're going to keep doing it for a long time but we're going to add more advanced functions further down the line and some of these more advanced functions will be uh, processed through the GUI instead of being saved on the keyboard uh, that is something we'll get back to at a later stage when it's more when we're able to show something okay so let me then immediately show you this basic UI uh, let me close down all this stuff here or maybe I can let's see okay we have another question from uh, follow low loud <laughs> uh, so in a way it's hacking the analog inputs into games yeah uh, yeah yeah that is correct so since analog keywords are not really a thing yet it is or whoa, should I whoa, answer whoa, the questions, whoa, or whoa, do you want whoa, to? Whoa, oh, whoa. Whoa. All right, whoa, whoa, all right. Whoa. what is that? I had, whoa. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> oh, anyway. Whoa. Okay, well, color is screwing out that. So yeah, it's essentially, it's it's a hack for now, if you want to call it that, because it emulates an Xbox controller, which supports like analog values. Um, does it mean you have to switch between analog and digital type? Um, in some games you do, in some games you don't. So uh in games that have uh like proper controller support where you can set your own key bindings and stuff then you could just use it as a keyword at the same time since you could just rebind whatever keys you do and don't want to use so it won't influence each other uh in some games the sure. xbox controller are set so then you may run into some issues where you cannot type and use analog at the same time but that's why we implement this mode key so you can always uh, switch back and forth between analog and digital, which is one button. Sorry for that. It seems that I tried it before, but it doesn't do it now, so it's just grabbing the wrong window and it's not recognizing it. So uh, I'm going to do it a little bit different if I show my desktop, but if I'm going to do that, I of course need to move a couple of things away. Uh, okay. Okay, there we go. Okay. Okay. Ta da! <laughs> uh, let's see. Let's, let me let me see. What is the big screen? Yeah, this is the big screen. Okay. I don't have two screens here, so I don't have this. I cannot separate the stream screen and everything, so it's a little bit cumbersome. I only have one stream to my ex my exposal, so. Let's see. Okay. Um, so okay. Ta-da! This is the <laughs> the first version of the wooden utility or the GUI. Yay! Okay. <laughs> so uh, it's nothing glorified because um, the whole point of this one is to test the fundamentals of what it should be doing. So uh, graphic-wise, it's not interesting at all. It's still missing some functions, but it's working. And that's kind of the thing that we've been busy with this last uh, couple of months, or I mean, since the start of Kickstarter already. 
uh, was building up the fundamentals of the keyboard firmware and making this Solid. connection. Your uh, utility is just a loading screen right now. Oh I my mean, god! Really? I did think we did a bit more than that, right? Yeah, I don't I mean, think the uh, utility even has a loading screen, so. No, 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 no. This loading is image, but it should be showing. Yeah, switch to view. That's right. Yeah, uh, do the ta-da thing, thing again when you switch. <laughs> it should be showing my <laughs> desktop, though. It's. Oh wait. <coughs> oh, right, right. I know why. I know why. Oh, I know why. This. Oh. Yeah. yeah, the UI is so slow right now. It is. But it's yeah. not that optimized, so it may take a while to load. There we go. <laughs> I know. Now it's working though. Yeah, okay. So sometimes looking at the, on my left is my laptop with this live stream on, so I can double check it. Okay, so it's, uh, okay, let's do it again. Ta-da! <laughs> yeah, no, sprinkles, okay. So I'm gonna repeat it again. So this is the basic GUI. Um, nothing fancy, no special graphics, just, uh, purely functional okay and uh, also nothing UX wise really special not no. even functional <laughs> it just does what it has to do it just does what it has to do so uh, what you need to know is let's see I'm gonna show you the keyboard here I really do prefer to see I cannot see where the camera is right now so let's okay okay just pay attention to the colors here okay that's the important thing so like you like I said this is digital mode this is uh, analog mode so I'm, I'm in digital mode now uh, this is by no means going to be anything like the final okay so <laughs> it's just uh, here to show you a couple of things so I'm going to press this button here and it shows me I'm in digital profile. Okay, that's fine. But in digital profile, I cannot do any Xbox controls and everything you see down here are the Xbox controls. Okay, so I'm going to switch to analog mode. There we go. This is the analog profile. Okay, so for some reason we can see that I bind it from the buttons here. I bind it X here, which I'm going to unbind here. Okay, there we go. Okay, so the thing now is that analog profile free. Okay, I'm in analog profile free, and what we want to do, and I'm going to do this example in Overwatch. Okay, um, what we want to do for Overwatch here is we want we want to bind the left analog stick on WASD because we know for Overwatch uh, we want to walk with WASD and uh, we don't really want any other buttons we don't need it we can just use the keyboard buttons it's just fine uh, just uh, we just want to have analog moving so what we're going to do is first i called you should use the first profile but probably. yeah yeah so let me change it to okay let me change it to profile one here okay uh let's see the red one if i'm right no green one then Okay, there we go. Huh? Okay, so... Okay. So I just changed to profile 1 here. And I see that I already did all the work here, actually. Um, so that's not nice. Does profile 2 also work the same way, Jeroen? Keyboard? Uh, no. So uh, the only keyboard is only enabled for profile 1. Yeah. Okay. I don't want to get too much How many details. profiles will there be? Oh, for now, we're keeping it on free analog profiles. So you can switch between free analog profiles. Um, eventually, what we want is that the profile for... the pro If you have profile set up for a certain game, that profile will start up for that game. That's how we eventually wanted to ha have it. So you don't have to manually change anything anymore or you don't have to really think about it anymore. It just changed to that profile you made for that game. Um, but this is an example of something that's 
more advanced, which will be in the GUI itself and not saved on the keyboard itself. The keyboard will never recognize what game you're playing or something like that. So this is what I was talking about with these advanced fun functions. OK, so um, I have to clarify here. For Analog Profile 1, um, it now sees it as an Xbox controller, and it sees it as a keyboard. OK? so. I already mapped the buttons here for WASD. This X axis and Y axis is for left. Left trigger means, well, <laughs> this is left trigger here, but this here is left analog stick. So I already mapped WASD here. Um, but for the sake of you know showing some changes here, I'm going to map these on something I've never tried before. Let's do T. Uh, what, wait, wait, what is it? What did I just say? No, not T. Let's do F. Let's change this to F. This one to H. This one to T. And the other one to G. T and G, 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 G. OK. And I'm going to save this profile. And now already changed on the keyboard. So if I'm right, I don't have WASD left analog stick anymore. I have TFGH as left analog stick. So let's see if it works in Overwatch. And let me change this to this gaming screen. OK, in the meantime, let's do some questions. Will we be able to bind, let's say, F buttons to switch profiles? F1 for profile 1, F2 for profile 2, and etc. Yeah, it's very interesting you mentioned that because um, while we were preparing the demo, we were also thinking about the different things we could do for uh, for setting these, uh, the different things we could do for changing profiles. Because um, eventually the best way, personally the best way I see it is that you as a user can decide how you want to map, where you, how you want to map the buttons to change profiles because everybody has their own preference in changing those analog profiles for different purposes. I know for, for example, in a game like GTA, you want to quickly switch between two analog profiles, perhaps uh, for one for flying and driving, one for walking, for example. Um, but for a game like Overwatch, you know, you just use one profile, you don't switch in between anyway, you know, you just want to switch to keyboard and you want to switch to analog mode, that's it. So um, we haven't decided on that yet. For now, you can just ex expect that we'll have one binding here that will ch switch in between the analog profiles. And uh, as we're getting more feedback, because that's how we generally work, as we get more feedback, we're going to change that to a more convenient way, as, for example, I just explained it. Is that? Will the keyboard have onboard memories for these profiles? Will the keyboard have onboard memories for these profiles for LAN parties, etc.? Or are they stored in a PC? Yeah, so that's um, okay. We had a similar question before. Um, so basically, these free free analog profiles are saved on the keyboard itself, um, and everything I'm showing you right now will all be saved on the keyboard itself. But uh, we will. As we progress and we add more functionality to it, we're going to add more advanced functions, I call them. And these advanced functions are uh, are not going to be on the keyboard anymore, not be going to be saved on the keyboard anymore. Because very plain and very simple why, uh, if the question is why, is because the keyboard doesn't have enough memory to store that much different settings. And this it's a much better... Uh, solution to just do it through the GUI uh, for these more advanced functions. So in your case, when you go to a LAN party, you're going to have these three different profiles. You're going to have your analog digital mode. You're going to have your color profile, as however you set it up. And you can plug it in. You can start playing and using it straight away. It's just like advanced functions. Like I mentioned before, if you start a game and it sees like, oh, it's starting up Overwatch, so let's change this profile for Overwatch. And it's, you know, well, it has this profile, la la, that doesn't work at that moment because that is something more advanced. Okay, now there's like one more advanced question. Okay. Since the keyboard mimics an Xbox controller, does this mean the keyboard is limited to X amount of analog functions? Um, 
how you should see it is that right now okay right now the biggest problem you have with an analog keyboard is that a PC doesn't know what an analog keyboard is in general the only analog it knows is a gamepad and Xbox controller which is X input so there's uh, and gamepad is direct input so direct input and X input is what you call it are the only analog kind of buttons that the PC knows so if you want to have Keep running and jumping so we'll get motion sick yeah no problem <laughs> <laughs> so if you uh, where was I if if you so in this case uh, uh, the amount of analog buttons are limited to the Xbox control buttons or the gamepad buttons and the way you can use them are also limited to whatever supports that and what you will be able to do and just not in this first version we have here in the demo but will be uh, available later is that you can bind multiple Xbox keys over the entire keyboard so right now I bind it and I'll show it to you right now is I, I binded um, the left analog stick on TFGH and WASD is should not be left analog stick it should still be keyboard uh, if I'm in the right mode I'm not in the right mode let's see uh, I need to think on which analog profile is the this is analog profile one okay this is analog profile one it still works as a keyboard with WASD so you can see it still walks as normal keyboard and all my keyboard buttons work but if I'm right let's see if it does anything uh, nope am I in the wrong profile did I save it Did I save it? Let's see. Let's see, let's see. Oh, I know. I need to disconnect it. I hadn't disconnected it yet. So we've been updating the firmware a couple of times, and after you update the firmware, it's better to disconnect and connect it again, so... Let's see. Okay, okay, so now it should work. Yeah, okay, there we go. Oh, I binded something wrong here. Okay, um, so you can see I, <laughs> I made a wrong binding somewhere. Uh, now if I press G, it goes forward, and if I press T, it goes backwards. So you see I made a mistake with the left analog stick here. Um, but you at least what you can see now, though, is that with this analog profile one, uh, T G uh, T F G H is now my left analog stick, and here you can see I'm moving analog with Reinhardt. Can make it more clear. in the left upper corner is that a necessary thing or is it buggy? Uh oh wow hey it's showing there. That is interesting. That is very interesting. I think that's uh, a bug. It's not supposed to be there. But is that bug of the stream or a bug of the... Let me see. We are so good uh, prepared for this. Yeah. Like no, I I'm just freaking... There we go. I know what's wrong. Uh, it's because I'm in studio mode, so it just doesn't change instantly. It just asks permission to change. Okay. Understood. Uh, let's see. Okay, so let's see. No, so now it's working normal, right? I'm using uh, OBS, by the way. Thanks for that. Okay, so um, uh, even though that was in the screen, uh, I hope you were able to see that I was. Uh, I'm using uh, TFG for analog movement here. Uh, let me do it here. I'll do it with this very slow style. Okay, and that's that's good. Now let's see. 
let's see. Hmm, Jeroen, I think I'm a bit, I'm a little bit confused of which color is which profile, honestly. <laughs> Hello. Um, uh, you can just check it with the utility, right? Yeah. You can just press the get button and see which one is active. Yeah, I think so. This must be profile one because this one I adjusted here, so. But it's not the the keyboard is not activated on this profile. Did you know that, Jeroen? Nope. <laughs> so. No, no. Check it. Let's see. Let me see here. Me see. Oh. <clears throat> so, you know how it goes with demo, guys. Whenever there's a demo, shit goes wrong. <laughs> In this case, it's more of a thing that, what you should imagine right now, because this is an old prototype, we had to uh, make some uh, hot fixes so that the RGB colors, for example, would change when I change profiles, but it doesn't really change to the right color, I think, every time. I'm not sure. But at least I know that this is the first profile. Hmm. Or not. Yeah, okay. So, the... Okay, I know what's going on here. Uh, Jeroen, uh, sometimes when I uh, switch from um, from an from analog profile, it doesn't change the RGB color, so the indication doesn't always jump on in which profile I am. It's it's incorrect sometimes. So that is for Jeroen's side, and now for you guys, is that um, because this is old prototype, we had to change like the new and final keyword has individual RGB, right? But obviously individual RGB is not going to work on this old prototype so we had to do some hot fixes uh, so it would this so it would be clear what I was doing with the different profiles but it's not always working as expected so uh, if you see me jumping between these profiles that's the that's the reason why okay so let's uh, let's Want some more questions uh, yeah sure let's do a question and in the meanwhile um, I'm going to I'm going to change the bindings to some other keys. Go ahead. Mm, okay, this one is from a Manson. So is this, some, is, so is this something we could see down the line? Game devs being able to access the analog features on all keys, ignoring the X input limitations through a custom driver or something like that? Um... So though we have our custom drivers for game devs and an API where they can make full use of the analog functionality of the keyboard. Um, Jeroen is more qualified to answer that question. If I answer this question, so it's about... Um, well, sorry, you want me to jump in? Or? Yeah, wait, for game, dev, <coughs> for game dev support and API, right? So if... Uh, oh, yeah. And how okay, we're going to do so, that. Um, thing is there are a couple of stages in which uh, support can be improved so first thing is which should be relatively easy to implement for for game developers is they can just continue using X input but uh, improve the support for like using uh, a controller and mouse at the same time and also that it won't influence like the rest of the keyboard functions so let's say if you look at overwatch for example uh, while well, you can rebite all the keys uh, when you start typing and you press your W, then your joystick <coughs> still activates your, your Xbox joystick. So sometimes yeah, it starts here. moving and then it accesses the chat. So those are like small things which the developer can change or just keep in mind of, like with this analog keyboard, um, um, let's say use case. Uh, so that that's like the first step. Uh, second step would be to have full analog keyboard support. And what that would require is um, I don't want to go too deep into this, but basically it requires setting up your own, well, setting up a, a, a standard for analog keyboards and then, um, yeah, developing a driver. So, um, game developers can just use that and get like the, get like the full analog values from the full keyboard. So that is the next step we're definitely going to work on, but it's just, um, we're mainly focusing on the Xbox controller thing right now because we know that works. And after we get more keyboards in the market, or even more analog keyboards, because we're still aiming to, to like develop a new standard. So at that point, we'll start working with um, 
with uh, like a new analog keyboard driver also. Yeah, okay, so um, to improve the support. Can you switch the controller driver like the keyboard acts like a SideTag X65 with many analog signals? Wait, what's that? Steroid. Asked that like 10 minutes ago. Can you switch the controller driver like the keyboard acts like a SideTag X65 with many analog signals? Um, yeah, sure. So at release, we'll. Um... It will also get. You can also set it as, as like a let's say a gamepad. And since the gamepad you mentioned probably uses the same thing, you can use more uh, more analog buttons. But it's I think it's still limited to like. Um, let me check. It's like twenty. I'm not sure the, the, the exact amount. At the same time, which should be enough, of course, for for this application. But it's still. It's still actually, sort of a hack compared to like having full support for uh, analog keyboards. Oh, yeah, it's 16 for uh, for regular game pop. Okay, then we have uh, Ashi uh, Samurai. Uh, he hopes that he doesn't need to disconnect the keyboard every time the <laughs> there's an update for the keyboard or you flash new software on it or change your profile. Oh, right, so... But that's not necessarily... Not necessary. Uh, no, I, as you can see... Uh, you couldn't see everything I was doing on my screen, but I was just changing buttons and I haven't disconnected the keyboard. Um, so, for example, what I did is on my arrow keys, I have the right analog stick now. I just mapped it and saved it and uh, it works. It's uh, The only reason I had to disconnect the keyboard is because uh, I was using a debugger to uh, install the firmware on this old prototype. So um, I had to reconnect it to make it uh, recognized as a Xbox controller in general. So. Okay, and then there was another question, but I think I can answer that one. How can I? How can you tell if the caps lock is on? Does the button change color? Well, the main thing is if you have caps lock on, all your letters in the chat are typed with capitals. Is that the thing how you can see it? <laughs> no, no, that's uh, that's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> um, we are planning to change the uh, caps lock color to like an opposite complementary color than what the keyboard is. So for example, the keyboard is blue and you turn caps lock on, it turns to red, so to say. So it kind of stands out for, from the rest. But uh, it's also possible for the GUI to set your own colors, whatever you like, because maybe you don't want to get a feedback when the caps lock is on, and maybe you just want another crazy color, or want a brighter, or even more less brighter, or something like that. Right. Uh, and this and on this prototype, the caps lock just it doesn't show anything because what I mentioned earlier, those uh, indications, uh, a old prototype indication is not working. So, um, okay, so I, I set up a couple of things to uh, I, I figured out what was which profiles what. And apparently on analog profile two, the key it works as the uh, Xbox controller and the keyboard at the same time. So it was not analog profile one. Um, so this is analog profile two, and as you can see, uh, like last time I, I, I switched around the buttons here also for the uh, left analog stick. So TFGH is left analog stick here now, and you can see when I'm pressing F here, it's like sp you know and sp spamming under. It says understood because on F I have uh, I have that bind it on my keyboard, um, but at the same time it's seeing it as a uh, Xbox controller and moving analog here. So, oh shit. Okay. So and what Yulun was just mentioning about typing, Overwatch is this kind of game that if you move or you do any kind of, if you move then it will go out of the chat immediately, so you don't get stuck in it really great but not so great when we're doing this uh, demo of the same things at the same time because you can see here I can type let me turn off caps lock here uh, but when I move forward it goes out of the chat so and this is for left analog stick I don't know why probably go and the same counts for a few type and 
Uh, now that we see is fine, but here I use left analog stick again and it goes out of the channel. Okay. Rocket League. So I don't own Rocket League to be honest. So let's get out of Overwatch here. And let's. This one here. Okay, so. Uh. It does work uh, really well with Rocket League, by the way. We did it last stream. Uh, Rocket League, yeah. Uh, Rocket League yeah. is oh. on no, the your loading bar is back. Yeah. And there's another interesting question you probably missed. Is it possible to simultaneous, simultaneously map a second controller to the keyboard for local co op? See, second controller to the keyboard. Oh, so. Uh, I that's... From that one to George, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, let's keep that one for George. I can already tell that that's a very interesting idea, and that's really cool. Um, I just uh, yeah, for sure, because um, another use case would be... Um, shit, we thought of use case before. Um, huh? Wait a second. Yeah, I'm a bit tired, so sometimes thinking is a bit hard. Um, what you can do is, <clears throat> since you're limited to like X input uh, amount of analog, uh, keys, let's say. So if you just copy like the same joystick across multiple keys, then essentially increase your analog buttons. No, wait, that doesn't make sense. What? But you can, you can, you can for sure. We'll add it. Okay, so I'm setting it up on WASD right now. Analog profile two, and we're just gonna do this for analog profile one as well. And then I'm going to show you a game, which is Metal Gear Solid, where this does not work. For example, I'm not sure. Just not sure. Oh what yeah, of course, sounds <coughs> Um. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good one, Thomas. Um. Probably does, but we're not. I don't think we're able to support like multiple controllers on one keyboard. So that would be difficult. The only other option would be if you. Um, <clears throat> in a game, you could split one controller, but I don't think they support that a lot. So. Oh, guys, uh, by the way, let me know if the game sound is very loud, and then I can just lower it down if it's too loud. So right now I'm still in digital mode. Let's get to my helicopter here. Is there any other question in the meanwhile? Uh, I think so. Oh yeah, this one. Oh, caller, this one is for you. If the keys are ABS with backlight, do you plan to release a cheaper version of PBT, PBT with no backlight option at some point in the Well, I hope... At, the, at this moment, it's not in the planning. But I hope you also can see why backlight is very important for us because the backlight actually tells tells a big story because it tells you in which mode you are. Um, it can highlight certain things. Uh, there's also something I haven't showed yet. But backlight is very important as an indication function. So if you have no backlight in the keyboard, that means we need to uh, add it somewhere, add LED lights under a couple of keys to indicate it. And that means we need to make a whole new uh, PCBA and a different casing design and everything and honestly I don't know if it's gonna be really that much cheaper to do that uh, especially not now though so it's not not on the planning uh, let's see let me go somewhere
Okay, there we go. And is there another question? On screen overlays for profiles in that case then. Okay, so okay, I'm I'm reading this question. What about on screen overlay for profiles in that case then? That's a that's a good idea. Um that would be an option. But that also means you're you're obligated to have the the GUI installed and we will still have the thing it's it's very simple actually um, it, changing the entire keyboard design so maybe PCBA maybe the casing or something like that is actually a fixed investment we have to make uh, while if we just make some adjustments if we just keep it the same and we just produce a higher quantity uh, it will be better in this case because making having this fixed high cost of making it developing a whole new keyboard so it, we can put it cheaper on the market just f for us as a smaller company just doesn't at this moment it's just not um, how do you call that it's not really an option at the moment that is kind of the thing uh, so let's see here let's skip this dog misses me never bring him outside okay so I'm in uh, digital mode here so everything works perfectly fine because it's a uh, Caesar keyboard digital mode so now I'm gonna change to analog mode here let's see what happens okay so this analog profile actually sees uh, sees it as a keyboard at the same time so it just works fine because it sees WAC as a keyboard still so let's change it to a different mode uh, why is it still working okay I'm not sure do you hey Eric do you know if with Metal Gear Solid it needs to recognize the Xbox control or you need to enable it probably is that it? Is Eric here? Mm, I, uh, I think oh. it recognizes it automatically. Let's Good. see. Does it, does it, does it? Because otherwise... Let's see, let's try it again. Um, there's some new questions. Any chance we could use the RGB backlight as a notification uh, indicator, similar to the new gas keyboard? Um, Theoretically, just work-wise. Okay. <laughs> Let me. Uh, so see we're not gonna do like full wrong. out, full out RGB support API thing with which does keyboard does because that's not really our focus as like. Creating an analog keyboard, and not okay. Oh, never mind. Um, uh, but well, I personally, what I want to do is um, similar to what Razer or Corsair has is release some sort of SDK so the um, so the users can create their own application which changes the RGB color. So, but we we're not really sure how we will implement that yet. But it's something uh, like. We do want to create the possibility for users to like create their own RGB application, and so they can just couple it though to uh, notifications themselves if they want. Will clear um, that okay? So another question from Paula Lollout. Does that mean the chance of an isolated are slim? No, no, they're not slim. We actually support them straight away. Um, we have a couple of different keyword layouts. Um, do you know them by head color or? Uh, uh, what uh, the different the layers? ISO and keyboard layer, yeah. So if we support it, yeah. So it's a UK. Uh, so if you look at we support uh, ANSI and ISO, and for the ANSI layout, oh, we support UK, Spanish, Portuguese, Nordic, Estonian, French, Belgium, and German, Austria, Swiss. So a lot. Yes, with ISO and ANSI. Uh, it's very simple. You should just keep in mind that whatever language you have, 
uh, it doesn't matter what you have to look at is the layout of the keys so if one of the telltales is if you have a big enter and you have a small left shift with an extra key there then most likely that's the ISO layout and uh, that is the ISO layout we have and that's what we support and the language you're using totally depends on your PC um, the only difference between all our different ISO uh, layouts is the keycaps what is printed on the keycaps so obviously if you're from Germany and you have quartz then on this top row you have a Z, a Z here um, you have your Y here and that will be different on the uh, on the German ISO than on a UK ISO it will just be QWERTY with the big enter and everything and the PCB the same PCB supports both the so in the future it would be a possibility just haven't tried it before but it would theoretically it would be possible to just take out this whole top plate and uh, um, let's say this is an ANSI top plate take it out and then yeah if you have an ISO top plate put it in and then install the switch and the keycaps again and then you can do ISO layout so you don't have to buy a whole new keyboard for it just swap the top plate for the right layout so I'm getting back to the game I don't know it, okay so obviously I should be pressing left analog stick here but it's not doing anything so and uh, Metal Gear Solid it's switch switch between the two and I'm not sure not sure why it's not doing it now let's try this okay okay so what sometimes can be the case is that the game Okay, this is the problem. Okay, the game doesn't like it when you're s changing things on the go. So, in other words, I was changing buttons on the go. Metal Gear Solid didn't like that, so I had to replug the keyboard. Um, okay, so <laughs> apparently A is not assigned to anything. Let's see if I have a different one here. Oh, okay, apparently A is not assigned to anything. Oh, it is. Okay, there we go. Okay. No, this is the wrong... Okay, no, okay, yeah. So this is, I assigned it very weird. W is apparently going down, S is going up, and D is going to the right. A is not assigned. Um, but obviously what you're going to see here is I'm moving my mouse here. I don't know if you can see it, but nothing happens. And now that I'm able to move my mouse, nothing happens with, on the keyboard. So effectively what's happening all the time is, okay, I can walk analog here. Slowly walk here. Oh, it's, I don't know how many gradients Snake has, but gradually he can walk. There's some speeds, let's see. Okay, so it works, and it sees the Xbox controller, it sees the left analog stick, but, you know, I can't use any of my, I can't use my mouse. So it's disabling my keyboard and my mouse when I'm using the Xbox controller, and now when I'm right-clicking my mouse and using my mouse, it's disabling the Xbox controller. So this is what can happen in some of the games that support Xbox controller, but they uh, block out one for the other, or vice versa. And that sucks, because Metal Gear Solid would be an awesome game to do analog. Exactly, that would be an example. Metal Gear Solid is an example of a game that would, does not work. Okay, yeah. so... Um, are there questions? So yeah, a quick question between. From Anson, is the PCB and switch is different on ANSI ISO, or do the caps just cover the switches that are different? Um, so the PCB itself is the same, but the top plate is different. So in theory, you can change just the top plate and then change the layout. Um, map right analog to mouse, yeah. Um, I'm not sure if there are any go-to programs. So I, I think like Steam does their own. Um, so the Steam controller um, basically does their full own controller emulation within Steam itself. So that's why 
to get like the analog support, you can only run games through Steam. Um, so what you're saying earlier about uh, mouse map to the right path, that is probably something where they in indeed map the right analog to mouse. But doing that um, in our keyboard, um, it is possible. It's still a hack. So yeah, it, it is possible. Um, I mean, if we get a lot of requests from people where certain games don't work like this at the same time, we can do some sort of mouse animation as well. So yeah, there is there is a way. Um, yeah, there is a way to force the mouse as an analog stick. Actually, um, it's um, what was the thing called again? Like Sim Four, where where you can connect the mouse yeah, and the keyboard to um, to your uh, to your console, like an uh, like an Xbox. So then it does it, it does the other way around, obviously. So it goes from mouse to controller. Oh no, no, that is the right way. So it is possible. Ninja answered PCB question. Oh yeah, did did you get it or? Yeah, and there's there's Thomas. There's some other things uh, involved where. Um, so essentially, when you send data from a mouse, you send different positions, and when you send. Uh, data from a controller, you just send a certain direction, so that's also a difference. Yeah, that's indeed a big no-no. So getting that smooth is probably going to be another job. But that's why we just need game developers to have like proper controller support. But... Yeah. Okay, so I'm uh, starting up GTA in the meanwhile. Uh, I mapped the buttons for a couple of profiles different, but you wouldn't have to be very honest. <laughs> the LED lights are. Uh, it's the one side. Oh, yeah, I was going to fix that. Give me a second. Yeah. So that's one thing. And the other thing, I'm not sure. Let's see if what happens in GTA. But it's not. I think it's also not properly going through the different profiles. No. Yeah, here's hoping. Game devs will embrace the analog keyboard also retroactively. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I mean, if a, if a game developer supports the Xbox controller as well, then it's just which is, uh, having a controller and mouse at the same time. All right, Mati, you should let us know if you get any response. <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, that's indeed true, Thomas. That's why it also surprised me that the support really has not increased so far. Because you can, at least I can imagine that a company like Valve would have some, um, you know, strength to push out a developer. We actually tried sending an email to Valve earlier, but they haven't replied yet. So, anyone knows anyone at Valve? We'll, uh, <laughs> we'll be happy to have a contact. Like uh, I don't know, there's, there's this guy called. Gaben or something. So, is any if we, anyone has phone number? Then let us know. We try to pray to him every night, but it doesn't work. I think the biggest uh, takeaway, uh, the biggest thing in general, is that right now the big, we're focusing on how to get the best functionality without any game developer support. And as the further we get, the more we'll be looking at game developer support because that's yeah. Yeah, when we're at that point uh, that you will want game developer support means that you want to have some you want to have some extra functionality or special functionalities that you can that you can achieve with analog yeah maybe I should so. just try writing a meal to game directly huh? Just send it to some general address, so it probably didn't went to. That was also way before the Kickstarter thing, and probably okay, didn't take it very seriously. Okay, I have to be very honest. This is the second time I've ever started up GTA on this PC. Second time? <laughs> yeah. Oh. And um, 
I think I set. Okay, so uh, GTA 5. It's, so I'm in digital mode right now. Uh, you can see it's red. I guess you can see it here. In digital mode, um, oh, I have to start off with GTA 5. GTA 5 doesn't. I don't want this called. GTA 5 does not support analog movement in general, even not on the Xbox controller when you're walking. So. Also, with an Xbox controller, walking is uh, divided between wa left analog stick to the front. Is this is your fastest, and with shift, you start sprinting like this. So, uh, but in cars, though, it's different. So, I'm just let me just steal the car and drive away here before he just throws me out and everything. Are you gonna steal a car? And, oh my god! You wouldn't steal a car. Oh my god! Or download a car. <laughs> so I'm still in digital mode here. Okay. So there's. Two things I've done. Uh, first, let's go to analog mode. Now, let me see. To be very honest again. Okay, so this is. Okay, go away. Okay, let's see. Okay, so. <laughs> okay, obviously, I'm still. Oh, shit. I'm still in analog mode. <laughs> I don't know why S is punching. I have no idea why. Okay, but I'm trying to. I'm trying to walk slowly, but just. You probably bound into the right trigger. Oh wait, I made this one. Wait, I didn't made this one for the car. Wait, so okay, let's see here. Okay, okay, so here I'm definitely I'm in analog mode, and this one I definitely set up wrong because you can see. I did I did this one for double checking, so. You can see I'm pressing S. I'm walking forward. Just cancel this one. I'm pressing S. I'm walking forward. I'm pressing W. I'm walking backwards. Now I'm going to press it very slight, and it just has the same movement speed. As you can see, it doesn't have. Even though it's Xbox controller, but it just doesn't have any gradual movement with movements with normal walking. So let's jump into that car. Uh, this I'm going to get keep getting cold because it just. It's like one of the new games, okay. Okay, so I made this profile and I just hope it switches to the right profile because LED indications are wrong, so I'm assuming. Yeah, okay. Okay, this time it's finally correct, so okay. So now I'm in analog mode, Xbox controller, and again, you can see I map WASD the other way around so I would know when I'm in the right profile here. Um, w is backwards, S is forwards. Now, anal actually what happens here... My god, sh this call. How do I answer it even? I have no idea how to even answer it. There we go. Let's see if I can cancel it. There we go. Let's go back to this. Yeah, okay. So what I had to do is let me first show you that um, when you drive a car in, in GTA, obviously um, you're using the right and left bumper, right? So if you map left analog stick on WASD, like I did on this one, you can see that W and S does nothing. But when I steer to the right, it moves. So it sees the left analog stick. You can also see I'm gradually moving it now. So it's working analog here, um, but W WNS doesn't work because when you want to drive in GTA, you need to use left and right bumper. So I have this other profile where I put the left bumper and W, I think, and the right bumper and S, something like that. And A and D is still left analog stick. So actually, right now I can move, I can slowly go forward. You can see my lights went on there. Right, I'm gonna go slowly backwards. Okay, and now I'll just go slowly forward. Whoa, a lot of engine power here. Okay, there we go. I have to say it's a little bit difficult because uh, there's a very small space in GTA where you can slowly go forward here. Okay, uh, but when you see it, when I go backwards, you can see when I slightly press it, here the lights went on of the car, it means it detects the, the stick already. Or it detects the bumper already, and the further I go down, and now it just finally starts driving. So, 
Okay, so this works for GTA in the cars, which is nice. And that is an example of why you would want to have different profiles maybe for different type of vehicles. Um, alternatively, what you could do, and I'm going to see if I can set that up right now. Let's turn off this. Let's get out of this car and have that music off. Alternatively, what you could do is you could map the left and right bumper uh, on shift and space or L uh, or C, G, anywhere. So I'm going to do that in the meanwhile while you're going to ask questions. You can ask questions in the meanwhile. And I'll just open up the desktop here so you can also watch me change it in the meanwhile. Are there any questions? Uh, no, not really. <coughs> oh, so this device... Oh, yeah, yeah, there is a question. Well, it's not really a question, but something we might address. Uh, Patrick B says, we need a numpad too. Think about the armor fans, Galder. What about the armor fans? <laughs> what about the armor fans? Uh, well, wait, let me do this. Yes, awesome. This works. Uh, we need a numpad as well. Yes, I totally understand. Uh, when, let's see, also with GTA, you have a lot of numpad buttons for flying. Uh, for Amai, I can imagine you have also a lot of numpad buttons uh, for, f uh, for, I guess, viewing different things. I'm not sure. Numpad version right now, we're not sure what we're gonna if we're making a. We're deciding still what our next version is going to be. If it's going to be like a numpad gamepadish version or it's going to be full size version, but f the folks right now, the Woody One itself. It doesn't have the numpad, but we might alternatively, um, if you're really looking for numpad, numpad function, alternatively, we would be able to add like a layer, numpad layer in your keys here. But if you need the extra buttons uh, for games like uh, Arma or like GTA, the best thing I can only recommend right now is you, you just map the keys to different locations. That is, uh, yeah, I don't know how else to answer that question. Is there a next question? Let me see. In the meanwhile, I'm trying to... Uh, no, no. Uh, and I, GTA I, doesn't want you to be a good driver. No, no not, not at all. Probably. Never. Huh? <laughs> uh, let's see. Well, you're saying you don't follow like the tr basic traffic rules in GTA? Or... What are you implying? <laughs> Okay, so right now I'm going to change analog profile one. Wait, wait, that, that's another question what you can do in Grand Theft Auto. Do you need to switch between digital and analog mode to chat in Grand Theft Auto 5? So, oh yeah, I can show that. Um... T is uh, for chat. But maybe it only works, I'm uh, oh, sorry, maybe it only works in uh, Grand Theft Auto Online. Uh, yeah. I must probably, can you elaborate on what for you did online. for uh, Arma? Let me, let me see if I can chat here. I can not chat. I can't... Uh, I'm in digital mode and I should be able to chat if I press T, but it doesn't do anything, well, so... Well, the game frozen, right? Did it? No. Uh, uh, the stream, no, stream is just behind. Oh, right now I, uh, it, it, it looks frozen because I'm changing and the GUI is again over the game. yeah but can't you see me changing stuff on the GUI I'm, I'm changing stuff in the GUI nope no uh, I think so no no oh, okay so okay give me give me a sec I'm gonna just remove the GUI display here there we go there's no point anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, what I was doing was changing. So somebody said, but simultaneously keyboard. Uh, I was changing the bumper keys. Yeah, I was changing the bumper keys. Uh, let me think. What am I doing? Was there another question in the meanwhile? Okay, so I'm just gonna 
it will be possible to map the mouse buttons to change your profile. Map the mouse buttons? So for example, I want my thumb button to change between analog profiles. My mouse. Yeah, sorry, my too. Um, probably not since... Um, so basically everything like logic wise is done in the keyboard since we don't want to have um you just have to use, install the utility software to use our keyboard uh that also means is that if you want to use your mouse to change profiles then you would have to have your like utility software read the mouse and then send data to, uh, to your keyboard so basically that this mouse key is pressed so change the profile uh, no, I don't think so. Since that will directly conflict with um, what we want to achieve with the utility software, so we want to keep it. Well, it is an extra functionality, so we may add it. Hmm, interesting. I don't know. Okay. Okay, so I've made an adjustment here in my mappings. Um, I have to be very honest. It's a little bit confusing to map it with that UI if you've just if you've seen the UI. Um, so now I'm in digital mode, and I switch to analog mode here, and I made here a profile. Now, okay, I'm using my left analog stick, but I'm walking like all weird stuff because um, <laughs> basically I have basically because I mapped it really weird, honestly. Um, and it sees the keyboard, I think. But the point here I want to make is that I would be able to walk with WASD and I can jump into the car. Just do that. And now, like before, W and S doesn't work for driving anymore. But I can still steer with A and D. So I, instead, left and right bumper, I mapped it on shift and spacebar. So now with shift, I'm driving forwards. And uh, with spacebar, I go backwards. And spacebar is also analog. Let me show you. I've never tried it with spacebar before. There we go. Whoa, this is difficult. Spacebar is a bit more difficult. Here we go. Um. Okay, so. Oh, yeah, that's so what there was. Yeah. Oh. Sorry. No, no, go ahead. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah, there was some discussion about um, you can use, so steroids, uh, so you can use micro editor for your mouse to do that. So, um, but since at one point you have to let your key, so what Munson says is that at one point you have to let your keyboard know, let the wounding one know that it has to change profiles. So it does require some sort of communication from the PC to keyboard side. Um, so that's why it's not as easy as just implementing a macro. Because mode switch is not really a, it's something we invented, so it's not really a standard thing. Um, can I map numpad buttons for changing profiles? Um, I know what happened, but it doesn't mean the system can't recognize it. Um, can you explain to me why you would want to do that? Oh, so if you have like a separate numpad or... Uh, yeah, steroid, it is a key, but that doesn't necessarily mean it is assigned to a certain keyboard key. Just like, uh, let's say your function, let's look at your function key, for example. Uh, when you press a function key, it doesn't send anything to your PC. It's just something the keyboard firmware itself uses to trigger different functionality. So it's something similar. Okay. So... Um, yeah, I'm still kind of curious, actually. Uh, oh, yeah. I use it. Yeah, I'm mouse. Yeah, we definitely... Yeah, yeah, that's right. What's that's the question? A good one. Um, yeah, so Ashi is uh, talking about like how so it basically comes down to what are the different possibilities of changing the different profiles, and 
So while we did uh, create this mode key, um, we don't want to have that be the only possibility. So um, the only thing is, is when you have to convert it with a mouse, that means that what I explained earlier is that you have this extra layer of communication in between. So that is a bit more difficult, but uh, I think it's a nice, I think it's probably way better to have it be able to set on the mouse, especially if I have like, so mouse. many buttons. Isn't that with a hot, you would be able to assign that with hotkeys? Well, the thing is, at one point, you have to let your keyboard know that it switched profiles, right? So how will you If I don't, I, I don't remember that? the mode key. Uh, the mode key, since mode key switches the profiles right now, I don't know if there's any link you can make between assigning a hotkey on your mouse, letting it see it as a mode key. I don't know if there's like an unidentified key or something that you can map it for. But it's, it's a good point, though. Yeah, but the communication has to come from the PC to the keyboard. And that is also possible, of course. Yeah. But so what 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 the basic voice down to is your um so you have software on the so basically you have software on the keyboard and software on the PC. And software on your PC is your utility software, let's say, or your configuration. Uh so that has to detect that the mouse key is pressed or a key is pressed by a different device and then send information to your keyboard. So it is possible, but True. it's just uh, it's just more difficult than just setting a keyboard on our own keyboard, since all the logic is done within the firmware of the keyboard. It's, uh, it's kind of difficult to explain, but <laughs> without some sort of picture. But at least, well, uh, at least you, you, I think this is definitely a new feedback, though. This is not something we've heard before. Yeah, yeah, it's a good one. So that's really good. Yeah. We, Oh yeah, what I still wanted to say is we do want to make it possible to like set your own mode key or set your own keys for changing analog profiles because um, yeah, let's say the caps lock for example, if you don't use the caps lock at all, uh, then it's a, then it's just um, uh, easily access accessible button for changing modes. So you can definitely set that one. Okay, so. Uh, for as far as the demo goes, so uh, definitely, uh, honestly, um, with this, with the UI and with using this old prototype specifically, uh, setting up this these demo things, you know, it's not it's not as representable as it should be. Um, but these are the kind of the basic things I wanted to show is that the idea of that your keyboard is this Xbox controller and it's this keyboard and how you can combine things and change things. Um, definitely this UI you know this is like literally the first version and uh, it's today's one of the first days I'm playing with it for example and um, the most important thing the most the biggest takeaway from this stream in the end is that uh, we build up all the fundamentals of the keyboard and it's now just a matter of implementing uh, the ideas and making the visuals uh, to make it more clear and easy to navigate through it to change things and that's really exciting because uh, we recently closed the beta tester application. We recently chose our beta testers, and we'll, uh, yesterday we had a meeting with our beta, t some of our beta testers, and this is exactly where the beta testers are jumping in because it's from the beta testers' perspective to you know we're implementing things. And you just saw I was just testing a couple of things, and I noticed there were some small problems, even though the problems here are not really representable because this is the old prototype. Uh, but it's exactly the kind of thing we're doing the beta testing for because there are going to be some problems when you try some things uh, that we haven't encountered yet and that we can start fixing and we can adjust. And I really love the feedback um, that we're receiving, uh, just like the, the mouse button, totally new feedback. We hadn't heard of it before, so it's very interesting, uh, very interesting way for us to get to know more different type of functionalities we can implement. So this last part, I want to jump to this last part. I want to jump to uh, some uh, Q and A. Um, you can ask anything really, and then we're kind of done with the stream, and we'll be doing another stream 
uh, soon enough again. Uh, we want to keep showing new progress of the stream, and uh, this will be happening. This will happen on a more like biweekly, um, uh, on a biweekly basis. So, if there's any more questions, feel free to ask right now. It can be anything. It doesn't have to be about the game specifically. It can also be about the keyboard itself. Um, if you like, during the Q and A, I can. Uh, I can swap out some switches or something like that, I don't know, to keep it interesting on the screen. Just Battlefield 4 flying. Oh, right. Maybe you can go topless. Topless? Okay, let me, let's go. <laughs> no, uh, so Battlefield 4 flying. I can actually start a Battlefield 4. Um, I can go... So let's give that a shot in the meanwhile. So ask your questions. I'm going to start a Battlefield 4. Let's, I urge you this update. In the meanwhile, Battlefield 4 flying. I'm going to give it a shot. Star Citizen flying also. Oh, Star Citizen, yeah. Oh, right. Forget about that? No, yeah, I totally forgot about Star Citizen. Let me start with Star Citizen instead. Star what? Star what? <laughs> Oh, I, I actually found the error in the in the profile colors, by the way. Okay, let's fix that before I do this start because it's really confusing <laughs> for me to yeah. figure out what is what. Oh fuck. <clears throat> I need to log in with Star Citizen Office. Okay, I'm I'm uh, setting up Star Citizen in meanwhile and you can pull the new commit, so. First, I need to update the keyboard. So I'm going to keep the camera like this. Then, after I... Secret I've, stuff going on. Secret yeah. hacker things. <laughs> yeah, I have to uh, install new firmware on the keyboard. Uh -huh. uh, in the meanwhile, I'm setting oh, up... Oh, we can also show up individual RGB. Uh, oh, let's do that while I'm setting this up. How about that? Uh, how about sure. I set up a Skype call, Skype call with you? Is that an idea? Um, yeah, sure, go Then for I, it. you can share your screen. I see that. Did you shave yourself, No, and I didn't do my hair at all. It looked like oh a Oh my god. Oh my god, I'm gonna put on a hat. Give me a second. No, no, go for it. Okay. Okay, so uh, the latest prototype is actually at Jeroen's place. This one fully functions, but Jeroen is not, cannot do this demoing stuff at his place for some, uh, for some uh, good reasons. Yeah, uh, that's because you stole the proper webcam. Uh, holy shit, this is loud. God. Yeah, I, I, I lowered the doot doot there. It's still loud for me though. Oh, I didn't. I didn't lower down the doo doo. Oh, what? No, it's the right one. Okay. No, it's the right one. No, yeah, it's the right one. Okay. Yeah, it's the right one. Ah, he's not picking up. Uh, you need to meet yourself on uh, Discord, though. You, or no, I will meet you on Discord. Wait. Or no, okay, you did. Okay. No, what am I saying? Don't meet yourself on Discord. I'll meet you on Skype. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. The camera is still loading, so I don't see anything yet. Oh wait, it's my camera that's trying to go on. You need to turn on your camera. Okay, meanwhile, I'm gonna install this new firmware. I would love to share your screen, you learn. Yeah, 
I'm preparing the screen for you. Let me see. Is it window capture? And then I just probably choose Skype here. Let's call this Skype. Is Eric, is there any question in the Miwa? Well, you and I saw you. Yeah, wait, wait. I'm going to. I'm going to switch to Yurun here. And okay. So now we're live at Yurun's place. Uh, let me put this one here. Hey. Okay, there we go. Oh, wait. Okay, so now we're live at, at Yoon's place. He's going to show you individual RGB here on the latest prototype. You can see his beautiful page down button there. <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> In the, in the background, I'm going to just install this new firmware. Okay. Yeah, the orange. Yeah, and the orange thing here also, the one I'm eating. So this is the switch puller. This is the keycap puller. Probably going to get an orange color with the keyboard, uh, but we also have like a purple one here. Okay, so George is uh, fucking around a little bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so. So I have to use. Same one color it has, but this one. So now we have the RGB Oh, the video. Wait, okay, wait. Uh, looks like the. Looks like the. Stream, Skype, la la it freezed. So give me one sec. There we go. And still it's not showing, apparently. Maybe it's because, does it show? Oh, okay, I see why. Apparently I need to f watch it myself <laughs> in order to show it. Yeah. Oh my god, how can I change stuff in the meanwhile? <laughs> uh, okay, so now go ahead. I think I think this will work out. Ta da! <laughs> so we see the utility right here. It's the same version as Calder has, but this one. And then we have this 
little table here where you can just basically set the colors. Is the camera still working? So, I don't know. Wait, one second, one second. Maybe, did I fuck this up? Are you, I, are you guys able to hear Jeroen talking the whole time? There's no sound at all? The other guy talking is quiet. Okay, let me fix that. No, no, I don't think that's a problem. Wait one second. Give me a second here. Okay, so... Okay, try talking again, Yulun. Hello? Oh, you're so loud for me now. <laughs> Wait, let me do it this way. This is better. This time we need to save some time for a sound check. Okay, try talking again, Yulun. Okay, let's keep 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 talking you talk again you have to uh, less mumbly uh, even Not sure if they can hear you. Can you hear? Can you hear you? Uh, Yoon, did, uh, did you? Are you still talking over Discord? Yeah. Did I just boost myself there? I did. Oh my god, I have it now. Okay, sorry guys. The, okay, now it's fixed. Yeah. Got it? Yeah, so okay, now it's working. You can keep talking. Start all keep over talking? again, dude. Okay. Keep, keep, start all, start over, all again. over again. Yeah, yeah start okay, all over okay, again. Okay. Um, okay, so, same story, but back again so this is the utility we have right here Oop. and it's the same basic version color as and we have like this table for setting colors and a, louder, a slider for the brightness so in the end it will probably look something like you have like a big keyboard right here and you could just press the keys and set the colors um but if i just change this slider back and forth it's pretty hard to get it in one shot so i'll just focus on the keyboard but so you can just increase decrease the brightness and if i just type in random values in this table you should be able to spot some colors which are changed um right now with the close opening of the square bracket i think yeah it's probably pretty difficult to see but so what i also prepared is Something I like to call the Christmas demo, the Christmas special. <laughs> Let's see if this works. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we could also do RGB effects with this individual RGB. Um, yeah, so you could just set the colors from the uh, utility and we're probably uh, going to add some effects soonish but we're not really focusing any development time on it right now. I mean, we're just focusing on the analog part and just just something I made to show off. Um, yeah, it works, right? Yay. So uh, this is last time when we showed this uh, RGB demo, that video, um, that the keyboard wasn't ready yet. And uh, now oh, you're yeah. actually looking at a keyboard that has the that is ready. So this is a final, final prototype you see there. Yeah. It also just functions as a normal keyboard. 
It's just that uh, I don't have that keyboard here right now, and uh, Yoon has it there for development, and it's the only one we have. Hence, uh, hence we're doing it in this style. And let's see. Oh, and so I remember some people were concerned about the with the backlight that it didn't have enough underglow at all. But I think you can see here that the backlight is quite strong and there's a lot of underglow. If it focuses there also. So. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so I hope, I hope you guys, I hope you guys are happy about individual RGB there. Oh. There we go. Okay, Skype just ended. La la la. Okay. So in the meanwhile, I uh, updated the firmware. In the meanwhile, I updated the firmware, and I have Star Citizen ready here. Just the only thing I'm worried about is I didn't map. I need to map the lock controls again so let's do that and let's I'm going to show you my desktop here but not Skype this one there we go oh whoa we didn't expect these things to happen so hence the weird stuff okay so I have the UI open here as well um, for just open this up again just in case I just installed new firmware so let me also just reconnect this keyboard and what we're going to prepare now is WASD we're going to put left analog stick on there and we're going to put it on analog profile 1 so let's see analog profile 1 it still saved what we had last time, but we don't want to have this left trigger here, so we're just gonna make this empty. And let's see, this AD is correct. Then here, I think I need to do S first, and then I do W. S, and then here we have W. Save it. So this is. Is it S first? Yeah, I, f I think because it was other way around yeah. all the time, so. Um, let's see, current profile, yeah, okay. And for analog profile 2, I'm just, oh, see, I'm just gonna swap this one around. Okay, also, because you're mumbling, there's a question. Can we set the brightness for each key? Can we? <laughs> Are people actually setting your friend to us on Skype? <laughs> uh oh, they sending friend requests on Skype? Oh my god. <laughs> okay. It's okay. You want you want to chat with me? <laughs> go go ahead. Chill with him anytime. You, you can chill with me anytime you want. Okay. But for the question, can we set the brightness for each key? Um Yeah, I'm I'm still thinking about um what should we should do regarding the brightness. So um one thing we find very important is that Everything is saved on the keyboard, so uh, every color for every uh, profile is saved on the keyboard itself. Um, but to also save the brightness for each uh, would take up too much memory. So right now we're going with the global brightness option, um, but maybe we can do something smart where we can just embed the brightness in the color value. Maybe. Hmm. Honestly, I totally forgot. I totally forgot how to join uh, any server. I just joined whatever in uh, Star Citizen. If I'm right, you can see Star Citizen right now? Nope. Right? Hey. Oh, then uh -huh. the stream has some delay. But um, I'm in Star Maybe. Citizen. It's loading now in the game. Yeah, we can see the loading screen. <laughs> okay. Wait, you mean you see loading the whole time? Like the... 
You don't see Star Citizen yeah, loading bar, or what? The bar to overlay. Yeah, the overlay still. Oh, okay. Well, I'm loading Star Citizen uh, itself. Yeah, you can use set no color, so it only. Yeah, that's right. See if. But there's a difference between like um, gradually increasing brightness and. Uh, Yeah. Okay, so Star Citizen tends to load for a very long time, so... Um, we only see, like, the big loading bar on the screen. Yeah, it should be there for a little while, but did did the stream already oh, talk yeah, about Discord. RGB stuff? We have a Discord link. Okay. Not able to see our own live stream anymore. So... If like, what was the name again? Steel News. If you want to be friends with the Booting Boys, just uh, come join our Discord. But I cannot send it since I'm not allowed in the chat, so Calder probably has to do it. But uh, it's uh, Wooding.nl slash Discord. Well, so hey, I'm... Calder, you don't have an SSD, do you? I do, you do, right? But obviously I didn't install Star Citizen on my SSD because Star Citizen is way too big. <laughs> Uh, but I'm having a different kind of problem here, which is I'm in a game, but, oh wait, maybe I unbinded WSD. Maybe that's why. Um, are you able to see the game or is it loading no. still? No. It's loading. But how about voice wise? Is voice wise in the stream? Is that up to date? Try electronic access free free flight mode. Um so what uh so what Razor Razor does regarding RGB is they have their own uh set of uh RGB effects in their UI itself, which you can um uh, enable or disable or whatever. Uh but they also release an SDK so developers can implement their own uh, it doesn't capture stuff. Own effects as well. And we do want to do something similar because we also want to combine it with, uh, with the analog thing as well. Um, I, I'm fixing this in the So at one point, we do want to make it possible to have people like uh, implement their own RGB effects since, I don't know, it would be cool to have like people come up with different different things and maybe we can even like combine it with analog as well. So let's say. Um, the further you press down the W key, like all the keys around it start changing to different colors or whatever. So it's definitely something we, we're considering and we're going to add it, but just not sure when. Okay, I'm going to do it in this really bad way. Um, I just yeah, yeah, show my test Yeah, the API is pretty cool now. We're probably going to. But hopefully, yeah. Uh, I'm not going to steal it, but. Hopefully you can see. Uh, Hopefully you can see Star Citizen now. Um, I'm in a game. And I think... Yeah, yeah, I know that, Master. The, those animations are crazy. To play Overwatch, the keyword can change colors to match the characters, yeah. You're in the wrong, wrong place. Oh. <laughs> oh, you're stuck in Star Citizen. Oh my god. Oh, wait. The key bindings over there. I think I, I unbind the WSD at some point, so. La -la -la. Star Citizen, you're confusing me. Mouse. I don't want to have flight here, though. Where's, where's on foot? What? Any foot? No? No? Okay, so... Okay, I'm just gonna rely on... I mapped the left analog stick on WSD, but it's not moving, so I'm wondering if it's the game or it's me, so... Let's open up this one. So this... This nice website...
can show you if there's Xbox controller connected. So because I installed the new firmware, we're going to check if this firmware is even working. And apparently, it is not, Yoon. Uh -huh. Because it doesn't uh -oh. detect it. So I don't know if you changed something. I'll just connect the keyboard again. What did I change again? Do the same thing we do with routers. First, unplug it, then replug it. Yeah. So yeah. Try turning it oh, off and yeah. on again. Yeah, then. yeah. Oh. I did off and on again now. So now it's okay. Oh, okay, there we go. Let me see. Oh. Okay, and for some reason, you. Oh. Oh, okay. What? I think it's. Does work? Yeah, but it's still on this old mapping, I guess. Oh shit. Shit? <laughs> no, no, not shit. Are we allowed to set it on stream? No, not shit. I don't know if this not is shit. working. I don't know if this works. Okay. Shit. Oh, it seems, seems that that worked out. So I just, I saved all the profiles again, so now it all works. Okay, that's good. Oh, there we go. Okay, so... Okay, so um, let's see. Profile two is this one, I think, because <laughs> I can chat also. Yes. Okay. Yeah, actually, don't worry about like the whole unplugging thing. That's just a demo effect. Yeah, the un um, unplugging. We have the firmware update. Oh shit, I didn't show it. Um, we do have a firmware update set up, um, and that doesn't require any reboot of the keyboard. Oh guys, I I just realized this is probably not the place where I can start flying, right? It's the first time. I, oh, this is can. the first time in here, so. No, you can't. You have to go to a console and. Uh, get where is a console, right? though? I thought there was like this major space hangars where I could uh, call my ship. Oh, steroid says you cannot access your ship from here, so. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So we're not gonna do it from here. Uh, what I will show you here, though, is um, you can see I can still use my keyboard. Hello, guys. And my caps lock is on. Yeah, you need to go to electronic access in the menu. Call it. What? Um, okay. okay. Steroid size that you need to go to electronic access in the menu. Okay, so let's let's do that. I'll just show you one thing before I go there. Is let me go to the keyboard here. I need to have my OBS open here to see if I got the camera okay. There we go. I think this will work, right? Okay, so you can see here, I can walk analog. And Star Citizen. So you're showing right now that you can use analog and keyboard at the same time, right? Yeah, so I can use, okay. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. In this example, what I did now is WASD is left analog stick and I didn't uh, assign any of the other Xbox buttons. I could, but I, I didn't. Do you have a third person view color? Or? Is there a third person view with how? Probably find it somewhere. I don't know, does somebody know? Whoa, what did F1 just do? No, no. Ooh. How do I go Maybe to it's first? Numpad. Is it on the numpad? No, I don't know. Okay. F4. F4? Oh, there we go, okay. Okay, so this is full speed ahead. See, only W here. And um, let me just slowly press it here now. Okay, so here we press it slowly. Now we're walking slowly, and I can press it more down. So depending on the game also, um, each game has their own anal uh, like sensitivity curve. If it's a bit laggy, it's because my PC isn't the most ultimate PC ever. So with the stream, it takes up a lot of resources. Okay, so each game has their own analog curve or the sensitivity curve. So uh, if you're wondering when does it decide when does it decide to walk a bit faster and when does it decide to run, it all depends on the game. And in some games, the curve we have by default is nice and it's just fine. But for some other games, you might want to change that curve. So we have different um, uh, different sensitivity of when you start running. Maybe this running animation, you just want to have it when you're all the way at the bottom. And right now it starts running when I'm near the bottom, but not all the way at the bottom. 
So that's something that you would be able to adjust. Um, okay, so you can see I was walking analog, so that's uh, the Xbox controller. You can also see, can confirm here that WASD's Xbox controller left analog stick. But at the same time, here in the game, is enter his chat, right? Oh, wait, okay. Okay, in third person mode, you can't chat, uh, apparently. So here you can see I press enter and I can still type. I can use the WASD also. It just works as a keyboard. And you can see it's in, apparently in Star Citizen, it works perfectly. It doesn't even move the left analog sticks when I'm typing. So that's perfect, right? Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so let's do the same thing in the, in the spaceship. So you guys need to help me here. How the hell to do that? So I'm going to exit to menu first. Electronic access in the menu. This uh, version is working a lot better, Jeroen. Thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Good, good. And next, electronic access. Okay. Oh, it probably is arena commander stuff. Star Citizen can combine signals from up to five. Hodas. How do you pronounce Hodas? Well, Mouse, it's, keyboard, it's like... controller. Yeah, yeah, it's cool, man. Star Citizen is doing a great job on controller support. It's amazing. Uh, what should I do to Jones? Other game developers, take note. Uh, I think you need to access Crest Sader. Go to the hangar. I, sh I just did electronic access and... Arena, I, I'm doing Arena Commander now, so I'm just going to do Drone Sim here. I think anything that bring gets me into a ship ship here. Free flight? Yeah, yeah go for Drone Sim. Yeah, no, I just go for Drone yeah. Sim. So... Yeah, I know what it stands for, but how do you pronounce it? Oh, HODAS? It sounds like a different word. Broken moon? Oh yeah. Is the moon broken in this game? Ah, free flight, that sounds good. I should, see, I'm gonna purchase a second screen, I think. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, and I can hide all the other stuff. That's really annoying. <laughs> okay, um, I don't know what's gonna happen, so let's press W here and see what happens. Oh wow, okay, yeah, so I'm going for it, obviously. So I don't know how I can show. I'm gonna press W slowly, and all the way down. I don't think you can see big fingers. Oh, rotate, rotating. Okay, let's see with rotating here. So I'm pressing D now. Let's see if I press it slowly. There we go. Rotating very slow. God, talking about getting or like motion sickness. Let me let me look at the planet. Yeah, obviously I don't know what I'm doing. So okay, let's. We have some uh, some new input from uh, Mr. Pleasant Calder. Yeah. Do you even OBS? Do I even OBS? I'm using OBS Studio. That's right. Okay, so I'm slowly rotating now, and now I'm holding it all the way down, and now I'm just slightly pressing it, pressing it a little bit more. Oh, there's like this big switch between this. And it switches to his faster rotating and even faster? No. Okay, so that's that's left analog stick for each functions. I don't know, there's probably some kind of like strafe, right? So let me see. God. Okay. I need to figure out what the strafing is. Or like what's it called? Um like this so that's strafe yeah so if we're way WC you can switch to strafe um, yeah I don't know uh, switch to strafe 
Dude, <laughs> yeah, switch. switch. I don't know how, how do you switch this straight? What are you talking about? I enjoy your meal, man. Uh, I don't know. Like, I don't know on the Xbox controller. Is it maybe? Oh, it is. Okay, so my right analog stick is on my uh, right arrow keys, mapped on my right arrow keys here. So apparently, strafing um, with the Xbox controller is a right analog stick, so which replaces my mouse. So here I can also show you that depending on how far down I press it, you can see it's really sensitive at this point here. It changes depending on how far down I press it. Let me show you something else, which, which is interesting. There, it actually makes a difference between if I press the right button all the way down and I start pressing the left one. It actually counteracts the analog, like it counteracts your movement to the right. So when I hold down, I'm holding down the right arrow key all the way down, and I'm pressing the left one slow a little bit, and it's counteracting that key. And when I press them both all the way down, it's going to be on zero. We have a question from Pinoy Power. Mm -hmm. Was it hard to get used to analog inputs? Oh. If it's hard to get used to analog input, I have to be very honest. Um, when you're not used to analog input at all, you're still using it like a normal keyboard and you're not really utilizing all the possibilities of analog simply because you're not used to it. So the more you start playing with it the more you start noticing actually that there's this like slight difference and you will slightly adjust to you'll slightly adjust to this uh to these differences and then when you switch back to your keyboard you're like oh what the fuck which is <laughs> you're starting to notice that you learned you taught yourself all these little tweaks with your fingers that you never noticed before until you go back to your keyboard Is there another question? Uh, yeah, what's something else? Um, yeah, <clears throat> I'm probably not going to pronounce this correctly, but <laughs> Jung Inver Soiland, I guess it's some Swedish name or Nordic area. Uh, there's something really nice about seeing a keyboard performances, performance, precise movements. Uh, yeah, it is. It's, That's uh, a great question. Well, it's not the question, but it's uh, <laughs> still kind of interesting to get like this whole this oh, idea, well, whole idea smashed from morning. just a regular keyboard. You are approaching. You don't have the precise now. control in the keyboard, but now you do. So. Oh, there's one other thing we could show you besides this analog movement, uh, and it's about activation points. Uh, usually, with this demo, we have this one button where you can change your activation point instantly but what I'm going to show you now is I'm going to change the activation point with the UI um, to whatever I want so I'm going to do this with a numpad so wait one sec or a note block notes notepad what numpad numpad <laughs> numpad no is disgusting yeah word. yeah let's not talk about numpads okay <laughs> okay so let's see if I'm right you can still see my desktop here um, I'm in digital mode now, it's all red, and I'm going to change it in my digital profile. You can see my activation point is 150. Obviously in the final UI, it's not going to be like this, it's going to be based on like millimeters. Um, it's just uh, right now it's like this. F and Jeroen, if I'm correct, the lowest one is 30? Yep. Okay, so changing my activation point to 30 now, let's save it. So if I'm right... Right. Does it do it? It does it do it? You sure, Freddy's the lowest. Or does oh. it not work? Oh, we have it? an interesting question from Steroid Caller. Um, can you use forward and then boost when fully pressed down? So essentially, multiple keys, uh, multiple actions on one key. Oh shit, I fucked up. I changed it to zero. Wait, now there's Just no activation point. One more time about multiple activation points. 
Yeah, so um should tell you. Yeah, yeah, exactly, Stuart. So what Calder is showing here right now is that you can change the actuation point, but that also means is that you can indeed have like let's say multiple actions on one <laughs> break so keyboard. <laughs> Are you gonna type it? You're gonna say your actuation point anywhere. Yeah, exactly. So this is really interesting, okay. <laughs> I set my okay, activation point. Okay, let me just point. do the talking in the meanwhile. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, so this multiple activation point, because this is really important. Um, so, if you can set one activation point, any uh, point you want, you can also set multiple activation points, of course. And you can use that for like forward and boost when fully pressed down. But you can also do it in a, in a game like League of Legends. You have difference, oh sorry. I don't know if you, can, you guys can hear the train. Yeah, we can hear it. A little bit. Okay, give me a second. Okay. okay, so in the meanwhile, I'll, I'll let you know what I'm trying to do here. I'm trying to change my activation point. Um, but you saw I just changed it to zero, right? I, when it's on zero, it means there's no activation point. You, <laughs> you can't type anything. Um, now I save it on 30, but I'm not sh I think it's because of me having the old prototype. It's not actually going at a lower activation point right now so need to see let me play around with it yeah i think yeah, I you can try until like 20 well maybe it's even 23 you can t try somewhere between 20 and 30. no not 200 that's too much what oh, i did 23 and uh Okay, I think it's at the That's border low. of, this is quite low, it's really at a border, okay, like, what the hell? Hey, someone uh, spotted your Miami keycaps, I thought. Uh oh. Oh. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah, you're gonna spot it again, because I put it so low. Okay, I think this is a thing we have to show in the next stream when we're actually uh, a bit further with the development of it because it's yeah, uh, just not working as expected and, uh, yeah when it has a slider yeah okay there we go okay okay so obviously uh during the stream um we've showed you guys some very very pre premature stuff um stuff that is not working as good as we shown it before and in demo uh, but the biggest difference between then and now is that we actually have all the fundamentals of the keyboard and that is a very big deal for us it's not something you can visually see really um, but it's a really it's a big milestone for us and uh, we really wanted to share that with you guys and also you know we wanted to share a bit more about what's what's going on and no. yeah we don't just want to show off like well, we want to show off developments and not just demos, you know, Restarts. set up demos or yeah. movies or whatever. It just shows, uh, yeah, we try to show what we are doing and uh, keep you guys up to date and like this whole process, which we just love to share about. Exactly. So, yeah, and, and I think in the, in the past right now, we've been showing a lot of we've been always preparing a demo for a specific function because we know the function works. So we prepared a demo for that function. Um, but the problem is that it doesn't mean that demo we make is a fully functional, really good keyboard that you want to use. You know, maybe it doesn't have NQRO, for example. It doesn't register as fast as possible. So it doesn't have all that. And um, right now, we actually have the, the fundamentals in the keyboard, which means that um, it it everything we're showing right now is actually usable and it's not a demo anymore it's like it's in the continuous improvement and now it does read the keys as fast as possible all these things are now programmable especially being able to program those those controller keys for example that's something we could have not just demoed easily and it's really something we had to build the fundamentals for so yep so yeah and um i can show you guys a couple of extra things since we're sharing a bit more since we're sharing a bit more about you know w what's happening and how we're doing, don't forget about this loading here. By the way, uh, 
it's not gonna it's not relevant anymore. I'm just gonna take it away. Oh, not this one. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so um okay, so let me show you a couple of other things about how what what's happening right now. Um what's happening with us right now and what's happening with the keyboard. Um I can show you a couple of things is for example let me start with top plates. So we have a near final top plate here. I posted on Instagram as well. And this we have a situation situation called the What's border the, yeah. is still there, friend. Yeah, I can take it away. Wait. Uh let's everybody's see. getting triggered. Oh my god. Oh oh my god. Okay, it's all gone. Now there's only a camera. <laughs> no more borders. Okay, so this is a near final near final top plate. Uh, it just has a small blemish. Uh, you can't really see it oh. on the camera. But you can see the logo Whoa, got stamped on correctly. Hey, I think we missed the question. We missed the question here? Yeah, about oh, so we, we're doing the activation point, and Stuart asked, "Is there any calibration needed?" Keyboard always set zero at the start of the connection. Um, that's a question for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, um, that's the best question for you. Yeah. Um. So. Um. The production right now, it is like. Um, so the main issue with calibration is, um, so let's say you press like a calibrate function and if all your keys are uh, not pressed, then uh, they're all, so since they're optical sensors, then just no light comes through at all. So that's, that isn't part of the calibration. And the only thing you want to calibrate is like the lowest part. So what is the lowest value you can go? Um, 410 for reading questions? What, what are we doing? <laughs> We're trying to answer something here, okay? Um, getting distracted. <laughs> oh, I lost my story. I shouldn't read the comments while answering questions. But um, um, so the thing is, like, when you fully press a key, what is the value then? And that is something you want to. Um, so we haven't really um, found it necessary yet to implement like calibration. Um, but. If we do like find major differences like between keyboards in production, but also um, maybe like your keyboard is five years old and your IR LED is not as bright as it used to be, uh, then we can just implement it then. But right now it's not necessary yet. So I'm going to jump to the next question here. Is about because I was showing the top plate earlier and somebody asking if uh, at one point this uh, logo will be backlit. Uh, no, uh, at this moment, uh, no, because um, we don't have any LED lights at this position of the keyboard. Um, I mean, it would be something we would be able to add a, at a later stage if it's interesting, um, but it doesn't fit our profile to do that, so it's not really on any plan to do that. So, uh, so <laughs> the backplate is really tasty. So, this is a near final backplate. And uh, it's just too bad. I don't think the camera can really catch it. You can see my, s I have really sweaty hands, so it will f show it more than what it should be. Anyway, it has a, uh, in the end it does have a brushed finish. Let me grab this other one. Okay, in the end it does have this uh, brushed finish. Um, and it's kind of like a darker gray. Don't worry about those uh, smudges. It's really, I have sweaty hands. This was this is a top plate installed with the switches. These are all blue switches. This is an old top plate, so it has a really shitty logo on there. Okay, uh, this was a prototype top plate, um, and this one was actually a brushed one. So you can see you can scratch on it, um, but this brushed one gives like a totally different feeling on the keyboard and we're going to give the the premium user the premium the sprinkle backers on the kickstarter are going to receive also this brushed version of the top plate so you have 
this I mean sandblasted version so you have this brushed version of the top plate as standard on the keyboard and as a kickstarter backer if you're sprinkle backer you have this brushed finish uh, I said it again sandblasted finish top <laughs> plate yeah really oh my god what time is it in Taiwan called yeah it's getting late I, I we need to close this off soon okay then the next thing is this one is the this is the velcro uh, this is the velcro cable ve uh, cable manager velcro so this velcro you can basically manage put your cables all together um, like maybe I have an example here no anyway you can uh, you can Put your cables ooh, all around and keep it together. And um, I guess those are two things we haven't really really showed a lot. So other than that, uh, other than that, I think we've shown most of the things uh, that we're able to show right now. And when we talk about when we talk about what is the current status with with the with the product. Uh, being delivered mm. um, right now uh, you might know that in the past we've been talking about um, we want to get the best switch as possible best analog switch as possible because this uh, the switch we're using right now has this uh, two millimeter analog range because it doesn't have any light be uh, before the two millimeters so halfway about here it starts reading it and uh, we want to increase that range right so the manufacturer promised us that they would start making a new switch version with a better analog range and uh, they should have finished by now but they haven't and we're still waiting for that and it's um, we're not sure what's gonna happen yet so there is a good chance that that might cause a small delay in the delivery um, other than that we did receive if you've been following us and you've been reading the blogs and you know that when we changed to individual RGB keyboard uh, we have uh, we also had to change the we had to buy new components for individual RGB and we had to change the MCU because we we wanted we needed to upgrade it and uh, we weren't Which sure Which is not part of the individual RGB by the way Yeah it's not part of the individual the RGB yeah, we, we decided to upgrade the MCU because the we would be able to implement better solutions. Uh, this particularly was about the bootloader. It probably doesn't say anything for you, but it's a quite a central part of it, and and it's a better one. Yeah, basically, basically it boils down to, like, you, at one point you want to do a firmware update, and uh, with our old MCU, we didn't have, like, proper memory for implementing a proper firmware update function require you to us to deliver like extra drivers with our utility software and blah 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 and just didn't want to go into the mass and that like so we changed the microcontroller so we could do like proper firmware update yes and uh what i saw one of the questions here about the cable i think the cable is two meters long i'm not sure but it's a quite long cable so and it's also braided. One, one and a half or two millimeter, and it's braided. So let me let's unplug it here. And it's gold plated. And it's gold plated. <laughs> okay, so here <laughs> is the cable. It's this kind of braided. I don't know if it's gonna focus here. So it's this kind of braided cable. You see it with mice uh, often. You see this cable with mice, and it's micro USB. So whoop, and it's and it's gold plated. I don't know if it's focusing. No. Uh, yeah, so... Oh, we have another question we called her. Yeah, let me just... Um, before that question, let me finish the story about MCU lead time. So we also received oh, yeah. the dates about when we're going to receive the new components for the manufacturing. It's going to be middle of October, which is really great. So we can start producing. But it's a little bit on the late side. So this whole November delivery is getting in... Uh, is a serious question if we're going to make November delivery. Um, there's a good chance, almost for sure, that we have to deliver in December. So we'll be updating about this as, as soon as we know what the switch status is because that switch, if that switch doesn't 
come on time, then we're going to wait for it because we want to get the best possible switch with the first delivery. We don't want to give the first users the, you know, the first version of the switch. No, we want to give you the latest and best version of the switch. Okay, so what was the question? Um, question comes from Custom Free or do non optical switches fit the plate? So just standard Cherry, uh, cherry or Gator on. Would be fun to use the spare plate for another project. Um, well, actually, you, any, you can. You still have Cherry switches? Yeah, and let me see if I can give it a shot here right now. So this is a switch from KB Talking, I think it was, KB Talking switch. This is the top plate, and let's see, yep, it mounts also the regular any cherry switch or clone switch. See I can't get it out, I'm, I'm wondering if I can get it out at all by the way. Yeah I can. <laughs> I think it's not, but honestly I'm noticing that uh, the, our own switches are mounted more like I'm able to get it out with my finger with our own switches you're not able to do that so uh, I think it's not as tight as it could be but I don't know if that's normal no. but mechanical switches are soldered so yeah maybe less switches. of an issue than with our switches yeah exactly I mean if you're gonna solder no, anyway it's not a big thing but here with the flare tech switch I'm not able to do that. I literally need to have that switch puller to get it out. So I hope that answers that question. And is there another question? So, um, oh, and if there's any question about uh, what the current status is, uh, feel free to ask also. I'm just going to close this. Do the, the last part of the stream. We just do the Q and A, and then we're going to close down the stream. Um, and uh, if you're not interested in the Q and A, just let me tell you right now that uh, we're going to have more streams bi-weekly and show more progress and talk more about it. And like always, every time we stream or every time we do something, we're going to get keep getting better in it. So you can see from this stream, it took long. We're trying to figure out some things, but we're just showing you like raw stuff stuff that's actually happening with nothing prepared like far in advance make sure that this demo is gonna work 100% because you know we're gonna wanna cheat you in some way like like that so um, okay so is there any extra question uh, not in chat please so mm -hmm. oh Do we have something else we can share. Um, let me get. So the first of October, there's a keyboard meetup in Germany, which we'll be attending. Oh, so yeah. that's cool. And um, we're gonna do. Um, it's in. Oh, shit, where is it? Rhein, Rhein, Bochum, Rhein. I don't know. Rhein. Somewhere in Rhein, but yeah. So we're attending that and bringing the keyboard. So um, if you live in Germany, and um, Want to meet other keyword enthusiasts and meet us in live, and just and want to play around with the Woody, you can uh, go there. And we'll also do a small presentation That's about right. what we did, um, how we started, our goals, and oh yeah, good. You can go to the mechanical keyboard. So that's you're probably going to And then they have like a tab here on the top. And free pizza. Yeah. So if you're if you're in Germany or if you're joint or you're attending that. Uh, meetup uh, will be there and if you're if you just learn about it then join it and uh, we'll see you there or at least you'll see Jeroen and Eric not me though yep. I'm in Taiwan <laughs> yeah you're a power hey okay so oh, we have one final question called it okay one final question uh, back plates can we get any from other stores companies and maybe also talk about our own plans Oh, a link, please. Can you put a link in the chat? Yeah. Uh, kind of yeah if Eric I'm not allowed to post that? links. You, you need to oh. come to the UK, mate. UK. 
Okay, Maybe wait. we will. Let me get a Sometime. link up there. Let me we'll get a link for you guys. First. So about. <laughs> so about about top plates. Um, we're going to release the three D file for the top plate, so anybody can f try to three D print the the top plate themselves, and our we ourselves. That's I just put the link in the chat for the Germany meetup, and for the top plate itself, uh, we're going to release um, some of our own top plate, different top plate colors, uh, the same top plate design but different colors, and what would be maybe fun for you is that maybe you have an ANSI right now, but you want to switch to ISO, then you in theory you could buy the ISO top plate and swap out the switches and your keycap and then you can use it as an ISO keyboard instead of a ANSI. Um, but the main thing about the top plates is that you can change up the style, you can change the colors and hopefully, And but it's not. this is not something in the tunnel yet but it's something I'm personally looking forward to doing is we're gonna uh, make some different type of cases as well for the same for your for the same PCBA for the same keyboard so Hopefully, uh, it's something I can we can start in 2017. Different cases also. Woo. Okay. Is there another question? Otherwise, I think I'm gonna close it down. Yeah, maybe before you leave, you can comment a bit about the Brexit and your opinion on it. <laughs> All right. Okay. If you're from the UK, don't worry about the Brexit. Uh, the next two years, you're still fine. Probably will be a bit longer than that because they have a really they're having a really really hard time to eat. Like before the Brexit is even really in effect, it will take another two years and seeing how things are going right now, it's going to take a long time before they even come to the right no. agreements. So uh, you don't so have to worry about it, it right now. Take up, so let's say it will take up like four years or something before <laughs> everything is completed and stuff. What happens after that? Well, we don't care about you anymore because you guys left. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, Eric. So that's working for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will always care no, about you. Just, uh, <laughs> no, I, 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 yeah, but I they are getting own, 350 opinion. million a week, uh, Eric. So um, yeah, 350 million week pounds a week, right? We still save. Well, but to be honest, I, I I was just joking because if you guys didn't know, it's but I don't think anything would change. Maybe a little small stuff <laughs> would change. So maybe some little taxes or anything, but I don't think they will stop doing i don't know commerce or something with you yeah. or whatever yeah uh but we were looking into some shows in the uk right to visit uh insomnia in the winter time there's the next one um pretty fast after a dream Mac. we'll be attending dream yeah. Mac, by the way we'll be attending dream Mac winter so if you're at dream Mac winter also uh, make sure you hit up with you let us know uh we can you can meet up with us and uh you know, show you the keyboard, obviously, but you can you can have a talk with us. So uh, yeah, let us know if you're going to Dreamhack Winter. Okay, then I think I'm closing the stream down, and yeah, if uh, I think the next stream will be probably in about what well, is two weeks is what day? Yeah, in about maybe two weeks. It really depends on what the progress is. I think it will be have another one in two weeks. Um, you'll be seeing more of this, and uh, hopefully this has helped you guys. Uh, Maybe we can show the first thing of the design of the GUI in two weeks. Maybe. And get feedback on that. that uh, you're you're saying it, Eric. You're the one that has to make it, so... <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Pressure going, right? Yeah, well, pressure, pressure's oh, on, oh, man. Uh, another very important question before it's we important one. Down. Can I use the winning on a console? Um, n basically, no. And let me let me put it differently. If you connect it to the console right now, it doesn't recognize it as an Xbox controller. If you if you plug it into an Xbox, it doesn't recognize it as an Xbox controller because there is this f thing called a device lock. I'm just gonna call it device it has a different name, but I'm just gonna call it device lock. Basically, Xbox controllers themselves they have this extra chip inside. Which uh, which uh, says to the Xbox, hey, this is really an Xbox controller. You're from Microsoft. You can you know use this. You can recognize this as an Xbox controller. 
we don't have that chip in the keyboard, we're not able to get that chip in the keyboard unless we start paying a license to Microsoft. They call it color. It was just a joke. Nobody plays on console. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, so then to follow up that one, if you have SIM SIM 4, honestly, you have to answer this question to me. The SIM, the SIM 4 also accept Xbox controllers themselves, and you can just map, maybe like if you connect two Xbox controllers, and you can map it on one Xbox controller. I don't know if SIM can do that, for example. Or does SIM, does SIM 4 it's a mouse and keyboard. Yeah, I know, but Sim4 can recognize keyboard. different devices. Can Sim4 de recognize a gamepad device, for example? Well, probably not, since there's so many configurations involved. But I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I don't know. It doesn't say so on their website. Because how you should see it is what Sim4 does, basically, is you if you connect a keyboard in Sim4, it just sees a keyboard, and it's just going to translate keyboard input to the controller input, uh, and... Uh, what it's when you connect the mouse, you know it's gonna see your mouse movement, and it's just gonna translate that to left analog stick movement, movement or right analog stick movement, for example. But the problem will still be that the input from your keyboard is digital; it can only on off, right? And the input from the mouse, yeah, for your right analog stick, that is just the same; doesn't really matter. So. So that's why I'm asking this question because if Sim4 can recognize a gamepad, then it can recognize analog input, which you can translate to this left analog stick, which would give you analog input. But basically, if if Sim4, I'm not I'm not sure if they have Microsoft. I mean, they can communicate with Xbox controller. There's not really uh, Xbox con. There's not really a reason why we can't. Unless there's some uh, Microsoft licensing involved. So I'm that's a good pretty point. sure there is, but I'm not sure. Well, we should Your try. next point, we, wooding we for consoles. We, 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 don't, we don't have Xbox. Yeah, we'll call it the Xbox controller. No. Uh, we can give it a shot, actually. Plug it in the Xbox, see what happens. We haven't tried at all, so... We're just no, no. theoretically... We don't have an Xbox. Yeah. We, don't, we all don't have an Xbox, so... Oh, there's something behind the curtain. I saw it. Huh? What is it? Uh, so my wife <laughs> um, okay so I think we're at the end of the stream then um, okay, so by closing it down I'm just gonna say I don't know if there's like a subscribe button or a like button or something like that I think there's a subscribe button somewhere if you subscribe it will let you know I think you also have to turn something on like a notification or something but we'll let you know when we start a live stream uh, we'll always announce it but um, at least then you'll know when and see you guys next time and keep in touch. Yo, thanks for watching. Thank you. Bye. Can you show your face Bye. before we shut Bye. it down? I don't have you don't have makeup? It's gonna show her face before we <laughs> shut Yay. <laughs> okay, there we go. Bye bye guys. Bye.